madogo dogo serikali ya jubilee ni kubwa we watia sonko wafanya biashara yake hapa Nairobi na watu ya Nairobi we kuja na kazi tuko naye yako uje ungane na sisi tujenge Nairobi hii na tujenge Kenya pamoja the man offers you a job in his administration. He says, leave Nairobi to Sonko. I mean, how many people would turn that down, PK? Come on. First, I was not here when he spoke. The it was just last week, yes, 21st. I, I, I wasn't here. I was away. Two, other than what I had on TV, I've not had anything more. You mean they haven't called you? No, I'm saying I haven't had anything more. Have they more. called you? This was a political meeting, and he was actually campaigning for his candidate he All was right? he was because that is a jubilee candidate yes i am an independent candidate jeff i have a lot of respect for the presidency and the holder of that position and i said that with that kind of respect i've had what he said but i've also gone around nairobi and i know how people are suffering mm. and you see and I can say this, there is a lot of suffering for Nairobians. I agree with the president that Kidero has failed. In that statement, he said it clearly, mm -hmm. Kidero has failed. But the person who was oversighting him was the senator. They have both failed. Nairobi deserves better, somebody who will work for Nairobi. I don't think that the senator is a solution. And that's why I said, and I said with a lot of humility, mm -hmm. with the respect that I respect the presidency with, that he should let Nairobians vote for the candidate they want okay, to vote you for. You say Sonko is not the solution. Is Peter Kenneth the solution? Yes, I am the solution. And if you allow me later when we discuss mm -hmm. the agenda, yes. I will have my solution. Okay, they didn't contact you after that rally. If they contact you between now and the 8th of August to say, listen, Peter, step down for Sonko, you know, we'll give you a cabinet position. You know, Jeff, I want to work for the people of Nairobi. I have seen the suffering, all right? A lot of things that are said in political rallies don't turn out to be what they are, all right? And therefore, all I'm requesting with a lot of humility is for the president to allow the people of Nairobi to vote for the candidate they would wish to. And he's done this in many other places, mm -hmm. in many other counties where there are, there's competition, even with independent candidates of people with other political parties where he has said, you decide who you want to elect. And he has done it before. That is my, my request mm -hmm. to him that he should allow Nairobians to vote for the candidate they would wish. Okay, so Peter, why are you being the spoiler that you always are? And I'll, uh, give me a moment here. 2013. Yes. Your critics said you were the spoiler of Uhuru Kenyatta's votes in Central Province. You, you were the spoiler. You were taking away a lot of votes from him. And now, 2017, you're taking a lot of votes away from Sonko, and you just said that Kidero has failed Nairobi, but in a way you might be helping Kidero come back by taking away from Sonko. I think we have to be candid here. What was I spoiling in 2013 and what did I spoil? What did I spoil? Because we have to be candid and honest, right? Yeah. I ran for the presidency. The president still won with 50 plus one. So I did not spoil for anything. Maybe you could have won with a there, lot more. There was somebody else. There were other candidates, seven other candidates in that race. It's only that people want to be selective. It is actually selective amnesia. All right? Where you just choose what you'd like to. Number two, what am I spoiling for Sonko? The voters are here in Nairobi. Everybody has a vote in Nairobi. It is for the people to go to the box and decide. What am I spoiling? Nothing. In actual fact, he is spoiling for me. How so? He is spoiling for me. How so? Because if you want to take arithmetic from the tribal things that you are looking at. And we are very you say, ethnic, you're right, go yes, ahead. Yes, when you say that, yes. if I was to be tribal, which I am not, which is the biggest ethnic block here. I would say Luya. No. Kikuyu. It's the Kikuyus, okay. followed by the Luyas. Okay. All right? Go on. 
So who is spoiling for who? What does he bring on the table? You know, this whole thing is a narrative being, you know, being circulated that I'm spoiling for somebody. I'm not spoiling for anybody. I'm looking forward to work for many Nairobians. But I said, if we were to look at it from an ethnic point, then he's spoiling for me. I happens to be the only one who has come from one, from the largest uh, ethnic block, mm. if you were to look at mm. it that mm. way. But that's not what I'm looking at. The sufferings in Nairobi go across all communities. When there is no water, it's every community that suffers because they are scattered everywhere. And it is a serious issue. Very, very serious. Yeah. I feel for Nairobians. <coughs> I have learned a lot. I have learned a lot touring the wards that Nairobians are really suffering. And uh, do you think you can solve that problem, Peter? Because yes, it, I it's can. It's a daunting task. Yes, I can. I have the passion. I will do it. When I really say that I will ensure the estates have water in one year, I will do it. I will do it. I'll get a tracker on the water pipeline. That water comes from Dakaine. We will ensure much is not lost in the distribution. We will ensure that the cartels that block water so that they can sell water in tankers are dispensed of by just having a tracker on the pipeline the way you have a tracker on the oil pipeline. Mm. Yes, it is doable. How come it hasn't been done by those who are there? The guy who is currently there is a consistent failure. Jeff, this guy has had 100 billion in the last four years. That translates to 69 million a day. Every word I've been, they say they haven't seen anything. They haven't seen anything. And he will not make it back. He cannot make it back. And yet the polls say he and Sonko are tied at 44%. Which poll? That's a discredited pollster. In fact, you had a cabinet minister last week saying the only poll he trusts is Ipsos. You saw it on record. Mm, I did. This particular pollster just appeared every Thursday for reasons, two Thursdays, for reasons. And they had approached me some time back and I didn't give in. So uh, let the people decide, Jeff. 12 days and 12 nights to go, Peter. Yes. Can, you, can you pull this off? You know, you are depending on a discredited pollster, right? Mm. So I'm not even ready to discuss those particular polls. I look at what I do on a daily basis when I visit the two wards, how I connect with the people, how we discuss their problems. I walk a lot in those wards. I feel their pain, right? Yeah. I hear what they are saying. Yes, we will pull it. Coming back to the nomination, you ran under the Jubilee ticket. Yes. You were trounced. I was not trounced. It was a sham election. I pulled out when I saw circular voting. I wrote a letter to Jubilee at 3 o'clock. I started complaining at 11. It was sham. If somebody has voted 51 times, others have voted 40 times. It was not using a party register. People are using IDs. Kidero sent his people to vote for their opponent as well. That's what it is. And it's a very bad trend. It could kill political parties. That's why you have rise to independent candidates in a big number. Yeah. So the questions that people will be asking in future, should I try nominations of a political party or should I just go direct? You also said in not so many words that there were forces that conspired against you in the nomination. I think there is no doubt about that. But to get it correctly, here Leo Peter See, Dwele to Gange Ajayo. Yeah. As opposed to Yelion Dwele, Sipite. I want to use the correct Swahili. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any ill feelings against those who conspired against you? I have none. I have none. You learn a lot, you see a lot, and you say it's lessons learned. Okay, let me put it in another way. Those who conspired against you did so knowing that you would be one of the biggest threats in 2022 when the presidency comes up for grabs. You know, Jeff, only God can determine your destiny, not a man. There will be so many nails on the path, but that is it. 
Who knows whether we'll be there in 2022, Jeff? Why are we predetermining something five years from now? Mm. We leave it to the Almighty. We need to live each day at a time. That's why I said I have no issues with the past. I have no issues with whoever did whatever they did. It is lessons learned. Let me put it in yet another way. Do you harbor any ill feelings towards Deputy President William Ruto? None at all. None at all. I wish him well. On the contrary, I don't harbor any feelings. And I have no reason. I have no reason. Were you offered a cabinet position? No. You by, were not? By who? By the president? By, no. By, no. 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 He didn't offer you? No. If he did, would you take it? I think we are 12 days to an election. We've done so much. We've done all these visits to the wards. It will be a disappointment to those who are supporting us and following us. I think let it be on the 8th of August. Let us go for the vote. And if you lose? There is life after 8th of August. There is life. Many people will lose, others will win. Battles are won and lost. There is life. I have lived after 2013. I can live again. Do Abraham Lincoln, who is taken as one of the great presidents of America, mm -hmm. lost four times before he became the president. And he became one of the great presidents of the United States yeah. of America. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You mentioned 2013 a moment ago. Do you regret running for president then? I have no regrets. None? I got to know our country better. I got to understand many things. I have no regrets at all. The reason I ask that question is, if you had ran for Nairobi in 2013, governor then, you would be running for re-election now. Do you know that? We cannot keep dwelling on the past. You have to look at everything moving forward because you cannot replay yesterday. Yesterday is gone. Today is about to go. You have to think about tomorrow. And that's what it is. That's what it is. So I have no regrets whatsoever. No. I was selling an agenda. I was clear. I toured every part of this country. I learned our country. I know our country better. It's a beautiful country. It's a beautiful country. Yeah. yeah. When people call you all these kinds of names, P.K. Chewingham, Ben Ten, Modogo, does that hurt you? No. Why should it? I'm none of all those. I haven't had some of the ones you've just said I've been called. You haven't heard? I haven't had some. But remember when I went to Gatanga in 202, the main name was Mothogo. Mm. Right? Yeah. And what happened at the ballot? You won. All those who couldn't get my name right were saying, where is Mothongo's place? <laughs> it helped me. Right? It did help me. Yeah. Yes. But you must also think when people talk to you or call you such names, what kind of spite they hold. Yet you keep on proving them wrong because mm. that's not what you are right yeah yes and if someone was to ask you because some people some critics see you as very aloof you're wooden you're detached what do you tell them i've never been aloof people of gatanga can testify to that i was a member of parliament for 10 years in 207 i had the largest possibly the largest majority in my re-election Right? It's people who want to get closer to you and are not able that say you are aloof. Right? Yeah. Why would somebody keep concentrating on things about you and they do not know you? That's what you have to think about. Right? So it really doesn't bother. No, I am what I am. And I know, coming from a humble beginning, going into uh, a school for the less privileged, I think I know better. So I cannot be aloof. Yeah. Speaking at of... The, at the end of the day, niko na umta. Niko na umta. Si umta, umta. Umta. Yeah. And um, you know, in umta, 
you are all in one household. You are all so I don't know what this aloofness comes from. Mm. Huh? Speaking of Umta, uh -huh. you grew up in Bahati. Yes. Have you been there in the campaign trail? Yes. What's it like now as opposed to when you grew up? Completely dilapidated. You know, the dispensary, uh, which was everything for me, today is just, as I said before, a consultant's office. Because they have no medicine, they have nothing. So when the doctors are not on strike, they do attend. These are things that we have said, given a chance to lead Nairobi, we can rehabilitate in one year. We can rehabilitate these facilities in one year. We can do it so that they continue to give services. Remember when these services are not there, the people who live around there who have to go look for a private doctor, pay, then they are given a prescription, they have to go buy medicine, but these things used to be available. They are not there. And Kidero's own admission, he's spending all his money in recurrent and s salaries. And he also says the government owes him 72 billion shillings. Let me tell you, those are rates which he found government owing the city council. When he came in, the government owed over 65 billion. So he should not give an excuse for what was already owing. It had nothing to do with his regime. He should account for the 100 billion as to what he has done with it. That is what is important. And he's really failed Nairobians. Let me be honest. And what would a Nairobi under Peter Kenneth look like? A Nairobi under Peter Kenneth, first of all, we are committed to clearing garbage within 90 days mm. and putting plants for collection on a weekly basis. We are very committed. You're going to eliminate the filth that's out there? Yes. In th three months? Three months. What do you need? You need trucks to pick and dump somewhere, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There is lots of land. You could do a land fill immediately, right? So garbage, we are very, very committed. That's me and Dan Shikanda, my deputy. Mm -hmm. We are very, very committed. I've talked about water. I've said within one year, using a tracking system, we want to see water in every estate in Nairobi. It is possible. Right? We want to ease off jam, traffic jam. And I get very concerned, very, very concerned when our kids have to wake up at four. I only had to wake up at seven to be in school at eight. Our kids wake up at four because yeah. they have to get to school before six. Right? And if you find the school bus going back home at three, all those kids are asleep in the school bus mm -hmm. because they woke up very early. Mm -hmm. Now, then imagine the parents who have to wake up probably half an hour earlier, right? So we are really in this mess of traffic jam. There are 16 roundabouts, six on Uhuru Highway, that I would like to see an overpass or an underground, the French Tunnel, which is only 200 meters you go under. Uhuru Highway would be easy because it's three lanes on one side and three lanes on the other. So you could actually take two on each side down below the roundabout so that you have a continuous flow of traffic. Number one, where does the money come from for that? And two, is in the water table too high? No. That tunnel would go to what you call two basements of a building if you did it. Mm. The French tunnels are not deep. They are actually about 20, about 15 meters down. The water table is much, much below. It's not expensive to do it. You can save from your expenses and do it. There used to be a roundabout at Museum Hill. People have forgotten it, right? Mm -hmm. It was eliminated. <coughs> if we eliminated the other six from Nyayo Stadium, Bunyala Road roundabout, mm -hmm. Railway Golf Club, Nyayo House, University, and Westlands, there would be continuous flow because the Uhuru Highway is a belt way. Right? Then you have another tent scattered that you can deal with. Mm. And that would allow flow and crossing over the city with ease. That would ease off. But of course, that's only for short term. Because the minute you ease off, people buy more cars. Mm -hmm. So you need to think in three years' time of a light trail system. You need to think about that. That you have to. So that commuters can go on that and leave cars at home. 
So traffic jam, water, garbage, that will be done. This traffic we can ease off in 18 months. Ease it off? Yeah. Where we'll be flowing all day, every day, even rush yes. hour? Yes. Come on. You've been to many cities in the world. Traffic flows. It does. It does. In fact, where there are street lights, like in Beijing, mm. if you passed green lights in Westlands, it is green all the way past Nyayo Stadium. Right. But what do you have here? Cops tell you when it's green, stop. Mm. When it's red, pass. Mm. Get this traffic. We will ease off traffic. I'm determined. I'm a Nairobian at heart. Born and bred, lived all my life here. I know what has happened in the past, and I know how it can be made to happen in the future. Yeah. Kidero tried to get rid of the roundabouts that you talked about a, a, a while back. That's a very Kienyeji way of doing it. Very Kienyeji way of doing it. You mean with the, with the boulders and yes, the... Yes, uh, it's a very Kienyeji way. You've done it in Westlands. Immediately after, it's a bus stop for Matatus. Mm. Immediately you get to Kempinski. The policeman at University Way has stopped the vehicles. Then, it's, it's a back pile. Yeah. So it doesn't work. It's bumper to bumper. Because you don't do it selectively. You have to be courageous enough to say, I want to deal with this problem. And you deal with it. That is what I want to do. That Matatu stop you just mentioned in Westlands, would you get rid of it? You can take it a little deeper. Inside? Yes. Or before. Yeah, because Matatu's park three, four deep. Yes. Or before. You could do it. And it will be done. How come it hasn't been done, Peter? Help me out here. I mean, we've had let an administration you, let, for let, four let, years. Let, you see, we have elected people whose track record have not been proven before, right? We have elected people who have no passion, who have no energy, right? Who don't have a vision to move forward, mm. right? I'm not looking for this position to be called just the governor of Nairobi. I want to work for the people of Nairobi and they will see the work being done. There is a difference. Yeah. yeah. So how come someone like Sonko is so popular in this city? How come he's the one who every, most people are saying, if they want change, we're going to go for Sonko? I think everybody has a track record. He was an MP for Makadara. He has been a senator. Those records are out there for public. You can see what he has done if he has done anything, all right? There is popularity and there is hard work. Those two are different. See, I once ran for MP's position in Gatanga and one of the guys who opposed me was a very famous musician. And he's a friend of mine and I asked him and he told me, you know, when I, when I go for a show I attract 50,000 fans because he was popular. When he actually ran for elections, he got 205 votes. There is a difference. 205,000 or 205? There is a difference of being on that stage entertaining and people being happy with their entertainment. And then when it comes to actual leadership, they might not see that leadership in you, but they like you on that stage. What are you saying? I'm saying he's a nice guy to entertain, right? But we must now, as Nairobians, interrogate the leadership abilities to deal with the pains and the sufferings of Nairobians. That's what we need to interrogate. This election must be about solving Nairobians' problems. If we don't, this city will grind to a halt. You'll have no water. People will not be able to drive because of the traffic jams, right? We will grind to a halt. And Peter Kenneth says he's the man who's going to solve this? I am saying I will do it. My manifesto is very clear. It has timelines, right? I have a proven track record of working hard. I transformed Gatanga in six years. I can transform Nairobi back to reality of what a city is within three years. I want to take a break, PK, and come back and talk about... Uh, who is going to be your voter? 
who are you asking for your vote? No problem. All right? Yeah. Is it the Kikuyu? Is it the Lu? Is it the Kamba? Is it the Luya? Who are you asking for your vote? And do you have some numbers in mind? Because I know you're a numbers man. <laughs> you don't have, you don't keep a single person's phone number in your, in your phone. Just because I know your number offhead. And you know a couple more that you mentioned <laughs> as well. But is it true you're like that? You don't keep, you don't? Uh, yeah, I don't save. It's all here. It's all here. That tells you there is something here, man. <laughs> <laughs> there is something here, man. All right. <laughs> keep tweeting. We'll get, oh, look at the numbers. Okay, we're still at 4357, Monica, yeah? Okay, we're going to take a break. Come back. We'll read your tweets, your SMSs, your Facebook posts. And we'll talk some more with the man who wants to lead this city 12 days and 12 nights from now. You've heard from all the rest of the candidates, by the way, individually here. You saw them debate the other day as well. By the way, they slammed you in that debate. Didn't he? Miguna, Miguna, he slammed you in the debate. No, he didn't. He didn't. I think when you are used to somebody just yelling, shouting without facts, you just allow them to be. Facts are facts. They don't change. And they don't lie. And they don't lie. And you know what? I think you also don't ask difficult questions. To me? Yeah. You know why? You hosted him before you came to Citizen. And he praised me. He talked very well of me. Because you, you weren't running then? No. That was July last year. And you can go back and check your interviews. Okay. Two months later, you should ask yourself why he changed. I'm not going to tell you. I've said it before. Right? Yeah. So that is it. And, you know, when somebody says everything is a lie, it's fake, and the reality is there, you leave them and you realize probably there is a deeper problem in them than you know. <laughs> Did you... Did he just say, I don't ask difficult questions? I mean, gee. <laughs> no, from your interviews. What I, that's what I meant. <laughs> that from your own interviews, <laughs> if somebody you interviewed last month... Yes, came changed, back again. Came back again, you should find out... What happened in between. Yes. All right. Peter Kenneth on the bench. Send your questions if you have any for him and comments. At Peter Kenneth, at Kunanga Jeff, at Citizen TV Kenya. Hashtag, as always, is JK Live. JK Live takes a break. We'll be back with PK, Chewing Gum, Modogo. Yeah. What else do they call you? Those are the only two that I know. <laughs> In a moment. <laughs> I'm sure there are more. <laughs> You're watching JKL brought to you by Telcom. Moving with you. Celebrating our heritage, we are stepping into a bold new future. Join us. Telcom, moving with you. <gasps> the moss! What's up with you? You scared me. Why are you here? For how long have you been blind? <laughs> Let's see it. Salad salad oil mpya yenye kufuniko maalum kinacho kusaidia kumimina bila tashwishi. Mafuta haya hayana kolesterol kwa afya tele. Beyake na fuwa jabu.